Well, hello, I'm Stephen Nesheba, and I want to tell you a little bit about atomic structure basics and uh, the connection to the periodic table. So I have a kind of a busy slide here, but uh, basically what we need to know is uh, that each atom has a tiny nucleus where, there it is, where almost all the mass of the atom is. And that nucleus, if you look at it closely, is made up of things called protons, things called neutrons. And the protons have a positive charge, and the neutrons don't have any charge at all. The rest of the mass is what we call this cloud of lightweight, fast-moving electrons. And each electron has the opposite charge to a, to a proton, so we would say it has a minus one charge. The Ångström or Ångström is a good distance unit for that cloud or the atom. Turns out the smallest atoms measure about two Ångströms across. And the biggest, which is francium, is, is a little bit more than four angstroms across. So angstrom is kind of a useful unit. Also, the electron clouds are layered, kind of, in a sense. And the layers are called shells. So each layer gets bigger and bigger. And uh, we call those shells. And I've just kind of shown a picture of that. So here's, uh, here's some of the smallest atoms. There's a hydrogen. It only has one proton in its nucleus. Here's a helium. has two uh, there's just one shell uh, of electrons around uh, those two atoms. Here we have uh, eight atoms that have two shells. Here we have eight more atoms that have three shells. And to organize things, the, the ones with the first one shell is called period one. Period two, they have two shells. Period three has three shells. And then in the vertical, they're kind of organized by groups. Uh, and so on. In this last group, you uh, uh, has, they all have names, actually. This one is called the, um, the, the inert gases or the noble gases. These are the halogens. Way back over here, there's, uh, there's the, uh, there's the uh, alkali metals. So um, now to get to the periodic table, uh, there's, uh, there's the structure of this periodic table is this on kind of the left way over here uh, those are called uh, metals okay some of you might recognize there is iron and copper and uh, and silver uh, a lot of metals are really stable uh, some of them are explosive like lithium and sodium way over here if you if you if you uh, expose them to water and in fact, if you count up all the elements, most you can see most elements are actually metals. Now on the right are what we call non-metals. That's these guys over here. I'm, I'm leaving out the purple ones here. Um, most of them combine with each other to form what we call covalent molecules, some of which you recognize. That's the oxygen that we need to breathe. That's the nitrogen, CO2, those are all in air. And I mentioned before the noble gases. That's what is in this last column on the right. They, uh, they don't usually bond uh, very much. Now, another thing. All right, so we've got metals over here, non-metals over here. Now, it turns out that when a metal combines with a non-metal, the result is what we call a salt. And you're quite familiar with sodium chloride. That's table salt. And if we can find it here, there's sodium, definitely a metal. And here's chlorine, definitely a non-metal. So when metal combines with non-metal, we get salt, sodium chloride. And let's see. Um, so the uh, the last bit of this, I just wanted to make the connection between them. So here's that periodic table that I just saw, and here's that uh, bunch of, uh, uh, diagram of shells. So you can see the first period of, of the periodic table. Those are the ones hydrogen, helium. There's only one shell. The second period of the periodic table, lithium, beryllium, here you see lithium, beryllium, all the way off to neon. Uh, they have two shells, and the third has three shells, and um, after that it gets a bit more complicated, but that's really, really the big connection between atomic structure and the periodic table that's, that's really useful to, to keep in mind.